this, I'm done. I'm getting a Corsair 1. After 22 years of being in the hardware game, Corsair have decided to release an all-in-one PC, fittingly named the One. And today I'm going to be breaking this thing down, testing it at both stock and overclock settings, and telling you guys if it's worth your money. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is your storable, collectible, and disposable Yes Man coming to you guys today with a review of the Corsair One, which comes in at 1800 USD, and you get a GTX 1070 air cooled version, 240 GB SSD, 1 terabyte hard drive, or you can step it up for 2200 USD and get a GTX 1080 liquid cooled, 480 GB SSD, and 2 terabyte hard drive. And if you're in Australia, the two different models will set you back either 2600 AUD or 3150. AUD respectively. The model I have here today is the GTX 1080 liquid cooled version with the 7700K and with that said I'm going to roll some benchmarks in some games at 1080p and 4K settings for you guys. So as we can see in those benchmarks, the Corsair 1 is no joke. This thing performed extremely well and also does so with having a very compact and small footprint. To be exact, it's 380 millimeters tall, 200 millimeters long, and 177 millimeters wide, and also has an all metal construction on the body and weighs in at 7.2 kilograms. The fan on the top can also be detached and is a magnetic levitational fan, which spins pretty low and is also very quiet and exhausts all the air out the top of the case. I'll let you guys have a listen to how quiet this thing is and also show you the temperatures while I was playing Mafia 3, which is a very power intensive game actually the most power intensive game I've tested to date. So with those impressive performance figures, it did all that with only using 265 watts from the wall. So this also has included a 400 watt gold rated SFX power supply, which is a small form factor power supply, and it does a great job if you want to overclock your graphics card. I managed to get an extra 240 megahertz on the core and also quite a sizable overclock on the memory. This led to a really good increase in both synthetics and gaming performance when I was doing the tests. The CPU on the other hand is a catch-22, where as opposed to the GPU which didn't even go over 60 degrees, which is very impressive considering the size of this case, the CPU came close to throttling at 4.5 GHz, which is the out-of-the-box clock settings for the 7700K. Now as you guys may or may not know, this is a problem with the CPU itself and not the radiators that are included in the Corsair 1. And after I delittered this CPU, I literally got a 30 degree temperature drop and I was managed to overclock this thing Thing to 5 gigahertz now so I got way better overclocks and a huge temperature drop. So the Corsair's 240 millimeter radiators on both sides of the case are doing a great job of cooling both the CPU and the GPU. However, this is where the Catch-22 comes into play because if you do delid your 7700K in the Corsair 1, then you will unfortunately void your warranty. And to be honest, you actually don't really need to overclock the CPU as it will handle the GTX 1080 at 4.5 gigahertz perfectly fine. However, it is one of those things that I like to do personally as an enthusiast. Though taking a closer look inside the Corsair one, there's two 8GB sticks of DDR4 Vengeance memory, which totals 16GB, and you can upgrade this. However, if you do upgrade this, you will have to remove the previous two sticks. And DDR4 memory is quite expensive at the moment. This stuff comes clocked in at 2400 MHz. However, I was able to overclock it to 2933 effective. So it is a pretty decent overclock and you will get performance benefits if you decide to overclock the memory, which just like the GPU will actually 
actually not void your warranty if you decide to overclock it. Though on that note of overclocking, the GPU and the motherboard used in the Corsair 1 are from MSI. And in the BIOS with MSI, if you guys are familiar with their own BIOSes, they're exactly the same as the one implemented in the 1. So you will be able to get in there and overclock and it is very easy to use. And there are settings that'll enable you to overclock the CPU and the memory if you wish to. Though in terms of overclocking the GPU, I just prefer to stick with MSI Afterburner and it's very easy to use and will work fine with this graphics card. However, after closing the Corsair 1 up and taking a look at the inputs and outputs, on the rear you get three 3.1 USB Type-A ports, one USB 3.1C and two USB 2, a PS2 port, audio ports which support 5.1 analog, an optical out, Wi-Fi antennas and also a clear CMOS button. There's also a one gigabit per second ethernet connection, one HDMI 2.0 and two display outs and at the front of the case there's one HDMI 2.0 out for VR users and also an additional 3.1 USB type A. And looking closer at the front of the case, you may also notice that there's two light, subtle blue LEDs, which is surprising because I thought they would definitely be RGB for sure. But they're only light blue and they can be changed via the software in either breathing mode with different intervals, or you can leave it on static mode and change the brightness accordingly. And moving on to the sides of the case, there are many little Zelda Triforce punch outs which allow the radiators to breathe. And moving up to the top of the case and on the bottom, there's also thick metal fins. And at the top of the case, you can actually remove the fan, which is a 140 millimeter magnetic levitational fan. This is one of the only two fans included in the one. The additional fan is also on the GTX 1080 or 1070 that cools the VRM and memory. In case of the 1070, it will actually cool the GPU as well. So now it's verdict time with the Corsair 1 and what do I think of it? Well, to be honest with you guys, I am really blown away by the 1. It is a great all-in-one PC, especially for a company's first time at doing this. I was really shocked. I mean, Alienware and some other brands could definitely take some tips from Corsair. This thing performed extremely well, is extremely small, and also made practically no noise while doing that. And you can even get no noise whilst you're overclocking your GPU and memory. The CPU, however, that's not Corsair's fault. That's more Intel's fault and you have to delid. Though I'd seriously recommend not deliding it as the Corsair one includes a two year warranty, which is comprehensive and I believe is worldwide. So if you have a problem with anything in your Corsair one, you can take it back to Corsair and they'll fix it for you, no problems. You also get Windows 10 64 bit home edition included and now if you were to go build something similar in specs to the Corsair 1 you could definitely save a few hundred bucks that's no surprise to do-it-yourself builders however with the Corsair 1 you do get that comprehensive warranty which is two years and covers everything and you also get that kick-ass small form factor all-metal construction so for the intended market that's people who just want a hassle-free PC that performs extremely well enthusiast like levels then the Corsair 1 is definitely a solid product that I can recommend especially for people who want to come from console to Destiny 2 for example on the PC I could see myself recommending this to a lot of people who just don't want to build a PC and want something that's just ready to go and will kick ass in games. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, do you like the Corsair 1? If so, what do you like about it? If not, what don't you like about it? Love reading your comments as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.